In this problem, we're going to find the curvature of this vector valued function at the point 1, 0, 1. So the formula that we're going to use for the curvature is a really useful formula to use whenever you have uh, a three-dimensional space curve. So whenever you have i, j, and k. So we have the magnitude of r prime cross r double prime. And then on the bottom, we have the magnitude of r prime and then it's cubed. So this formula is usually a good one to use whenever you have i, j, and k. So this only works when you have i, j, and k. That's because it has a cross product. And remember, the cross product is only defined in three dimensions. All right, so let's go ahead and work through this very carefully. So before we start taking derivatives, um, let's rewrite this in a more convenient way. Maybe let's write it in component form. So r of t is equal to angle bracket e to the t cosine t comma e to the t sine t and then e to the t. I should also mention just before we start that you can use the other formulas for curvature in this problem. It's just harder. So this is the easiest choice usually whenever you have i, j, k. All right. So r prime of t, we're going to use the product rule here. So the product rule says we take the derivative of the first, which is e to the t, times the second, plus the first, e to the t, times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine t. So that's the product rule. It's the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first derivative of the second. Let me write it up here as a refresher. If you think of f as your first, first function, it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. All right, let's use the product rule again. So using it here, the derivative of the first is just e to the t because the derivative of e to the t is e to the t times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, so cosine t. And then here we have the derivative of e to the t, which is e to the t. Let's go ahead and rewrite this. So we have r prime of t equals so we have e to the t cosine t minus e to the t sine t. And here we have e to the t sine t plus e to the t cosine t. And here we have e to the t. Okay, so now we have to do it again. <laughs> so this is going to be four product rules. The good news is once we do this, we're done. We just have to figure out what t is and then plug that in and then use the formula. We don't have to take any more derivatives uh, after this. So using the product rule here, it's the derivative of the first, which is e to the t times the second, which is cosine t plus the first, which is e to the t, times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine t. And then minus, I'm going to put a bracket here, and we're going to use the product rule on this piece. So it's the derivative of the first, which is e to the t, times the second, which is sine t, plus the first, which is e to the t, times the derivative of the second, which is cosine t. Check that. Derivative of e to the t is e to the t times the second plus the first. And derivative of sine is cosine. Boom. Doing it again. Another product rule. The derivative of the first is e to the t times the second, which is sine t, plus the first, which is e to the t, times the derivative of sine, which is cosine t. Then plus. Let's just check that. Derivative of e to the t is e to the t times the second, which is sine, plus the first times the derivative of the sine, which is cosine. Looks good. Last one, the derivative of e to the t is e to the t times the second, plus the first, which is e to the t, times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. And then we're left at the very end with the derivative of e to the t, which is e to the t 
We did it. <laughs> if you learn anything in this problem, it's the product rule. You become a product rule master. So now we have to figure out what the value of t is. So this is an interesting part. So this here is your first component, and it needs to be equal to 1 because of this. This here is your second component, and it needs to be equal to 0 because of this. And this here is your third component, and it needs to be equal to 1 because of this. So we see that t must be equal to 0. That's the only way any of this uh, will happen. right? This piece here, e to the 0 is 1, so that will work. Sine of 0 is 0, so it makes this work. Cosine of 0 is 1, and e to the 0 is 1, so it makes this work. So the only way via matching that this will work is if t is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and plug in 0 into our functions. First, let's plug it into our prime, because we're going to need that one uh, for two things, uh, for the top piece and for the bottom. So pl our prime is here. Here's our prime. So e to the 0 is 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. So we just get 1. And this piece here is 0, because sine of 0 is 0. So we get 1 minus 0, so it's just 1. Okay, so I'll write it 1 minus 0. This will be 0, because sine of 0 is 0, and this will be 1. So plus 1. And then e to the 0 is 1. So we just get e to the 0. I don't know why I, why I didn't write 1. So we have 1, 1, 1. We're going to need this on the bottom anyways, the magnitude. So let me just go ahead and find that now really quickly. So the magnitude of r prime of 0 is the square root of the component squared. So it's just 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. So it's just the square root of 3. Okay, so that's useful. Okay, this is equal to uh, the magnitude of r prime of 0. Okay. Alrighty, so now we just have to find uh, our double prime of 0. So let's do that. Our double prime of 0. So let's see what that will be. So plugging in 0 here, we're going to get 1. So this is 1. This is 0. This is 0. This is 1. So it'll be 1 minus 1. So the whole thing is 0, right? Because the 1's cancel. This piece here is 0. This piece here is 1, because e to the 0 and cosine of 0 are 1. This is 1. And this is 0, right? Sine 0 is 0, so the whole thing zeroes out. So we get 1 plus 1, so we get 2. And this last one here is e to the 0, so it's 1. OK, so now we're going to find the cross product. So r prime of 0 cross r double prime of 0. So we write the i, j, and the k in the first row. In the second row, we write down r prime of 0, which is right here, 1, 1, 1. And in the third row, we write down r double prime of 0, which is 0, 2, 1. For the cross product, the, the pattern is plus minus plus. So we start with plus i hat. Then you cross out the first row and first column, and you're left with 1, 1, 2, 1. Then it's minus j hat. Then you cross out the middle, co middle column and first row. So we're left with 1, 0, 1, 1. Then it's plus k hat. Then we cross out the first row, last column. We're left with 1, 1, 0, 2. And then we have our line. All right, let's see what happens here. This is equal to i hat. See, 1 times 1 is 1, minus 1 times 2 is 2, then minus j hat. 1 times 1 is 1, minus 1 times 0 is 0, plus k hat. 1 times 2 is 2, minus 1 times 0 is 0. So this is equal to negative i hat minus j hat plus 2k hat. So in component form, this is negative 1, negative 1, 2. Okay. Let's just double check that. So let's check the whole thing. So we cross out the first row and first column. So we got 1, 1, 2, 1. Did the middle ones. We got 1, 0, 1, 1. Yep, did the last one, 1, 1, 0, 2. It looks okay. 
1 minus 2 is negative 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. Oh, but there's a negative, so it becomes negative 1. Okay, and then 2 minus 0. Okay, everything looks good. Just want to make sure we, we don't mess up because we're almost done. So the formula is going to be the magnitude of uh, r prime of 0 cross r double prime of 0 over the magnitude of r prime of 0 cubed. That's the formula. So in the numerator, we need to take the magnitude of this. So that's just going to be the square root of negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 2 squared. And in the denominator, we already have the magnitude of r prime of 0. That's square root of 3. So this is square root of 3 cubed. So this is equal to, that's a 2 squared, 1 plus 1 plus 4, which is 6, over the square root of 3 cubed. So this is the square root of 6 over the square root of 3 cubed is square root of 3, square root of 3, square root of 3. So it's square root of 6. Take two of these square root of 3's and you get 3. So you get 3 square root of 3. And I guess you could simplify this a little bit. You could write this as 1 third square root of 6 thirds if you wanted to. So this would be 1 third, whoops, be 1 third times the square root of 2. So the final answer would be the square root of 2 over 3. I mean, you don't have to go this far. I kind of wanted to clean it up. Um, I just combined these into one square root and then wrote it as 2, and that stays up top. So that's the curvature, the square root of 2 over 3. Wow, almost 12 minutes. Here it is. Two more seconds. 12 minutes. <laughs> I hope this video uh, has been helpful. These problems are really long. This problem is really long. And honestly, this is the easiest formula. If you use the other formula for curvature, which, which is this one, I'll write it for you. So if you use... If you use this one, and I've done it, I've done this at some point. At some point in my life, I'm pretty sure I did this problem, and uh, I, I use this formula, and it just requires some nasty derivatives. The derivatives are, are harder, but you can use this one too. It's just whenever you have i, j, and k, it's just easier to to use this one. So, I hope this video has been helpful. Take care and good luck.